So hello everybody, um, welcome to the first example lesson on uh, dynamic programming techniques. Actually, I um, made the OpenAI gym video that you will see down in lesson um, th uh, three or four actually. Uh, I pre-recorded it before this lesson so you will find an, a few more information about how to set up OpenAI gym in your environment in that video. Um, however, we do not need most of the stuff. So actually, um, I decided to put OpenAI Gym intro back to the to the to the later lessons, and we will focus on a clear NumPy implementation um, for the dynamic programming examples. Um, so well, yeah, let's uh, let's start. Um, I will put down the video recording uh, for now because I think my face will just distract you. Um, yeah, to um, to actually get things starting, uh, you see a plain shell here um, what you what you need to prepare actually to to let um, to work with reinforcement learning or general start programming in Python uh, to the beginning uh, you would need to download uh, you need to, uh, to have available uh, a workable Python vers version um, as most of you or, or maybe um, uh, also due to other reasons it might be a very good idea to create a virtual environment to do this and not to use your system implementation uh, for that what you actually uh, can do is uh, you can use virtual environments or you can also go the full way and use anaconda um, you can find anaconda here so this is the anaconda web page um, anaconda gives you a, a complete uh, user space implementation of your python so you can actually decide what what python version you want and all the dependencies are really captures uh, captured then in the uh, in the anaconda environment so if you have downloaded Anaconda and you uh, and you packed it out, um, what you will get is something like this. This is the Anaconda workspace, and what you see is that in your workspace you actually have your own um, steadily compiled Python version, which is actually here. Um, so I choose to have in my Anaconda um, Python 3.7. Um, what you actually need to do before you start, you need to create a virtual environment. This can be done like uh, can, uh, done like this. Um, you, you do conda create and then you can actually so maybe you, you look it up you can actually create a virtual environment and, um, and define a workspace to actually um, work in so um, if you have done this I um, did this um, uh, before this lesson you can activate your virtual environment um, just by uh, just by putting uh, source activate workspace anaconda uh, to the file of your virtual environment. So my virtual environment uses Python 3.6 and is located in here. And what you actually see if you do this, um, you you have your Python, uh, you have your environment uh, working. And um, if you want to go out of your environment, you can do this. Uh, sorry, um, and you um, you can go uh, uh, you can go. Out of this but it's not working in here source deactivate I think it is yes um, yeah so uh, how is this virtual environment uh, thing working so what you can clearly do is you can uh, just uh, uh, in in your in your bash or in your favorite shell you can actually sh see what kind of environment you uh, what kind of uh, Python implementation you use and if you um, go in your virtual environment actually what what's happening is that you will use your pre-compiled Python version. Um, this is important because there is many libraries out there that um, properly only bind to certain versions of Python and the interdependencies between them. And to actually don't mess things up in your system um, environment, just use your virtual environment for your um, for your task or for your for your research. So uh, yeah, so if you if you if you have your virtual environment, um, what you should do is um, you should use uh, Jupyter Notebooks. So Jupyter Notebooks is a very nice. Um, uh, so what you can do is you can just uh, do this one. Um, I, you don't need to do it right now because I already did this. Uh, but with uh, content inside Jupyter, you actually install the Jupyter uh, notebook um, environment. And uh, then you can just call Jupyter notebook and uh, use the uh, file path to some directory or you use this just empty. And then you can actually start this. Um, yeah, so if uh, if you look on the web page, you can download actually uh, for this example or for this running exercise, uh, you can go to uh, to lesson two, um, uh, lecture four, DP Frozen Lake. This is actually what it looks like, and um, there's a Python file in there and an IPynB, which is basically a, a Jupyter notebook. Um, yes, yeah, so we go directly to this folder. So if you start it like this, 
Actually, what you don't see is that on the other screen, um, there is a, a web browser coming up. I will just uh, put it in here. Yeah, so actually what you now see is the Jupyter Notebook environment, which gives you some, some, some workspace where you can actually um, run, uh, run things. Yeah, so um, you have two files here. We have a Python uh, file and a Jupyter Notebook. Python files are really just plain Python files. You can look, um, you can look at them. Um, for your convenience, maybe um, implementing Python in Jupyter Notebook is not that nice. You have no code completion and things like this. So uh, for pure Python files, maybe a, a different editor or IDE such like PyCharm is maybe the better way to go. And um, what you also see is Jupyter Notebooks. For them, really Jupyter is the way to go to actually implement them. I make this a full screen that you can actually see this. Um, what you see in Jupyter Notebooks, there is different cells actually. Um, cells can be like plain text cells or also code cells. Um, what you see, uh, Jupyter Notebook gives you a really rich environment and also some, uh, some LaTeX probabilities that you can actually put formulas in describing text and also graphs and intervene them with code snippets. Um, yeah, so um, just uh, to get uh, started, so in, the, in this lesson we actually talked about dynamic programming methods and in particular about value iteration and policy iteration. And what we want to do now is actually we want to um, implement a value iteration agent to solve the frozen lake environment. In a frozen lake environment, um, this is somehow a copy from uh, what you will also find in OpenAI Gym, but we cannot use this implementation because OpenAI Gym assumes model-free environments, which we actually want to do in the upcoming videos. Um, yeah, so in Frozen Lake, uh, you have uh, basically a, a grid world and you have a start state, and you have a goal state, um, you have frozen um, states where you actually are on a lake which with the, there's something frozen and you have holes with, uh, with age. And the goal basically is to go from the start state to the goal state as you, as you might suppose. And um, you have actually four actions you can take. You can go left, down, right, and up. Actions are encoded using integer values in here. And the important um, thing in Frozen Lake is why you select a deterministic action, actually, um, there is some stochasticity in the environment. So this basically means that if you choose to select some action to go left, there is a probability that you will not go left, So, but you will go down or up. Uh, because you have friction on the, on the lake and actually you slide away. So that's actually the idea behind this. Um, it's very easy, you have some helper function here. And here is the description of the environment. The environment is just defined. You will also see some connections to OpenAI Gym here. Um, you in we initialize our environment. Um, we set the action and the state space and um, a reset function which, called, which is called after uh, reaching the goal state or reaching the hole when the episode is ended. Then you reset the environment, you can actually start a new episode. And that's the important um, uh, function is the step function. Uh, the step function um, uh, decides what happens if you are in a certain state and you select an action. And uh, what you see here is that uh, the transitions are depending on a probability transition matrix P with some underlying probabilities. And what's actually happening is that from, depending on this probability matrix, we actually sample a transition, which is actually applied. And um, this actually gives the next state. So it's not just putting you are in, um, uh, in this state here and you, uh, and, you go, uh, and you go to the right, you will not end up here. It's depending on a sample given from a probability distribution of the underlying probability transition matrix P. Um, yeah, so this is the environment. Um, there's also some, um, some rendering possibilities uh, that you actually will see pictures. It actually lets us uh, render pictures um, out of this thing. Yeah, so um, this is actually a helper function. You can actually see, uh, uh, consider it uh, done. Um, let's go to the Jupyter Notebook implementation. So in the beginning, we need some initialization and we need some imports. Um, as we do not use any advanced reinforcement learning algorithms in here, um, we do not use any specific RL libraries. We just import NumPy because 
in almost any Python uh, file you import NumPy and you need it for many things, also for the sampling of uh, tr transitions. Um, you import random in matplotlib to plot some things and we finally also import our frozen lake environment. Uh, you can just execute it by pressing shift enter, then the install is executed and the state is maintained in the Jupyter Notebook. Um, yeah, so this is the description of the NDP. We had a log already in the frozen lake environment file. Um, there's a short um, reminder how value iteration actually looks like and how the Bellman backup function is actually implemented. And this is our agent. So what we do is we define a, a dynamic programming agent, which actually sets um, a discount factor, uh, it initializes the MDP, so the underlying MDP is the frozen lake environment. Uh, we set a seed and um, we actually also define what, what um, states are defined to be terminal states, which actually are goals and holes. Um, here you also see how actually the, um, the MDP is defined. So you have actually a start state, you have ice, F is called ice, which introduces a stochastic action. You do not get any reward. In the whole, you actually end the episode. You also don't get a reward. In the goal, you end the episode, but you get a reward instead. And this is our initialization of the value function. This is actually what we will keep iteratively updating. Yeah. Um, so uh, this is actually a helper function that lets us calculate the value for all the actions uh, in the given state. Um, you see we iterate um, over the number of actions, actually update our, uh, our, our action values. And um, this is actually the loop that we actually go over the states and in order to update our uh, value function. And then we return the policy and the value function. And the policy is just a greedy policy and just returns the best action for each of this state. Yeah, so um, we can just initialize this agent using um, shift enter. Um, now we declare the agent class, initialize it's here. So actually we uh, initialize our dynamic programming agent. And then what we currently do is um, we keep our external value function that we keep updating and our policies. And um, so this is actually a list of policies to maintain the policies and value functions over the iterations. And what we do is we actually um, perform 20 iteration steps to actually calculate the value function using value iteration. Um, don't be uh, so curious, it just, um, it just really returned because it was a really fast uh, function cal calculation. So, it, so we did the 20, 20 iterations already on my MacBook here. Um, and what you want to do now is actually you want to visualize things. Actually visualizing is taking more time than actually calculating things. Um, and what you see is actually these are the states and the arrows actually show you the, the current policy actually. And the policy always um, uses this greedy policy update um, with respect to the value function. And in these states, everything is pointing to the left. And what you see is, and this, uh, the color coding also is the, um, it's a color coding determined, uh, which is in, in correlation with the actual value of the state. And what you see actually over the course of training is that you actually end up um, um, iterating over it and end up at a final policy. The final policy just says if you are in the state, you probably go down, right, down, right, right. So this is actually what the perfect policy at this point looks like. And also the value function, what you see is that uh, for uh, cells that are closer to the goal, the value function has larger values. And of course, uh, when you are farther away from the actual goal, where we actually get a reward. Um, we have a dimmer uh, value, which means actually lower values. Um, and what you see here is also a very nice uh, visualization, which plots you the value for each of the 16 states. So actually you see 16 lines and how these values are iteratively changed over the course of training. So actually this is iteration zero and this is iteration 20. And what you see is that over the course of training, we, we start with our initialized value function. And you see that some states really go up and reach their final value very quickly, which is the states that are closer to the actual reward. So most probably um, this one here is this cell because this is immediately updated. 
and as this state is updated the other one keep progressing in order um, as we really use this dynamic programming framework um, to really bootstrap the states and what you see is after about i think eight or nine episodes um, nothing's really happening anymore so after nine uh, after nine iterations i think um, uh, we have completed value iteration with the final values although the policy that we actually derive might also be um, uh, the real optimal one at earlier iterations. Yeah, so um, that was the first Jupyter Notebook. Uh, feel free actually to change the environment, to change the uh, stochasticity in the environment. Also maybe to use the bigger grid world. So actually what you saw here is there is a bigger grid world also defined. Uh, play around with the grid world, insert holes, terminal states, rewards, and actually see how this uh, changes things and also see how actually um, the course of training has changed. Maybe a, a challenge for you is actually to design a grid world and a reward function that actually um, lets value iteration perform uh, worse in order to that the bootstrapping is like um, um, uh, it's like uh, it's like distracted and you actually um, require more bootstrap iterations or maybe define uh, MDPs where you actually have a close to optimum policy after one or two iterations. Keep doing it, play around. I will put the Jupyter Notebooks also on the uh, website for download. Thank you and see you in the next video.